This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good day to be alive. Good morning, Facebook Live world. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church. We still masked up, but we're getting closer. Change is coming. Don't even think about it. Change is coming, though. Don't think about we're not coming back, but we are. Change is coming. Working on it, God is in control. He's working on it right now. Amen. Man, not going to be long this morning. Amen. But it's good to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to wake up this morning and look around and all your family doing well. Let me in. Yeah. Take off my mask just for a minute. I'm going to put it back on now. But, uh. Look around and all my family is doing well. well. Didn't get one of them late in the midnight hour phone calls. Yeah. Amen. Didn't get no, no one of those early morning phone calls. So right. God is good. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He is still in control. So yeah. don't get it twisted. Man is not in control. God is in control. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me right now, please? Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come right now. As always, we know how, Lord. Bow down heads, Lord. Thanking you for your many blessings, Lord. Lord, we come right now praying for Palestine United Methodist Church. Praying for every church door that is open in your name, Lord. Yes. We praying right now that you touch hearts and move whatever trying to hold us back yes. from hearing and abiding in your word this morning. Lord, Father God, we thank you for Jesus, Lord. Thank you for him coming and dying for us, this old cruel world. A world that didn't even recognize him, but he yet and still, he still died for us. Lord, we thank you because uh, you are worthy to be praised this morning. We praise you and give your honor, give your name, do the honor it deserves. Yeah. Father God, we thank you that you will cause all grace and every favor and earthly blessing to come to us, your children, so that we may always and under all circumstances, whatever we need, we will be sustained, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord. We delight ourselves in you, Lord. We exalt you. We magnify you. We reverence you. We love you, Lord. We believe you right now. We thank you for being so faithful to us, Lord. You are our source for every good thing, Lord, and we give you the honor and glory Do your name, Lord. Lord, we pray for all the sick and shut in this morning, all the bereaved families, Lord. We pray for those that know you. We pray for those that say they know you, Lord, but they act like they don't know you, Lord. Lord, we praying for all, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you right now for this chance to come before your people one more time. Yeah. Remove Maurice, Lord. Move Maurice, Lord. And let the people see Jesus and hear Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to thank God this morning for my wife, Brother Joseph, and Brother Ricky this morning. Amen. We praising God and thanking God for his many blessings. Not going to be long this morning, but I want to remind everyone that uh, we're still trying our uh, Google Meet uh, uh, Bible study on Wednesday night, uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, tune in if you still got the uh, the tuning in the what we're supposed to go in on tune in if not give me a, a text shoot me a text and I'll send you the message back again but we are still trying to get connected uh, on Google Meet on Wednesday night 6 o'clock amen. amen and we also uh, still we're, we're, we're praising God for our building amen Man. We we know that God is in control and it, it's on the way. It's on the way. We Man. just got to do our part and God is going to do his part. And part of it is to stay connected with God this morning. Amen. Go to the book of John, the 15th chapter. John 15. I will be reading verses 1 through 8. John 15. 1 through 8. Amen. Amen. John 15, 1 through 8. And it reads, I am the true vine, and my Father 
is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Let me read that again. Verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Want to talk a little while this morning. Huh? Stay connected to Christ. Stay connected to Christ. Our greatest need as believers is to stay deeply connected with Christ. He desires us to know. He desires us to commune. He desires us to fellowship with him on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Christians write. Christians preach. Christians teach. Christians organize. But many Christians have forgotten to spend time with the Lord. The word here this morning said to abide, abide. We need a more personal communion with God in prayer and through his word so that we can grow more in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to abide. We need to stay connected to Christ. We need to find ways to live our Christian life by abiding in Christ in a very real and a very practical sense. Now, as a pastor of a local church, I have come to realize that if more folks truly gave their relationship with God the same amount of time that they give to so many other things in their life, there would be a lot of believers walking around in victory and not discouragement. Right. If you are living out your daily walk with Christ in the same old way you did last year, if you live in the same way that you did 10 years ago, with no excitement, with no intimacy, with no deep abiding, you must, you hear me good now, you must make a change. You got to make a change. So I'm here this morning to help you find a place to start. Yes, to help you find a place to start. You need more then the knowledge that you need to abide in Christ. Listen, you need to know exactly what it, that means and how to go about it. You, you need a, a, a pathway, a route. And this morning, I'm going to give you about three simple points that will help you in your daily abiding in Christ. I'm going to give you three points to help you stay connected to Christ this morning. Amen. Point one. You need to spend quality time in prayer. Hashtag that. Number one, spend quality time in prayer. Have you prayed this morning? Really, have you prayed this morning? The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And then it goes on and tells us to de devote yourself to prayer. Devote. Keeping an alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. You ought to be happy to pray. You ought to be thankful to be able to open your mouth and give God some praises. We must follow God day by day with prayer. We must fill our mouth with urging. You got
got the urge and feel our urge and with faith and with our fervent desires. Yes, abiding in Christ means that we are to celebrate our fellowship with him. And the greater our fellowship, the more we will realize the richness of him and be able to appreciate his grace and love in every area of our life. Mm -hmm. Every area. To abide in Christ is to pray always. And as the psalmist told us to pray without ceasing. As, are you abiding with him this morning in prayer? Huh? Are you setting time aside to pray every day? in which you get along with him in prayer? Number one, spend quality time in prayer. Spend quality time in prayer. It will help you to stay connected to Christ. Number two is to lovingly, lovingly worship him. Lovingly worship him. Paul says in Romans 12 and 1, I urge you, brother, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. We talked about that this past Wednesday in Bible study. Uh, 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 what is a, a living sacrifice? What is a, a living sacrifice? See, we, 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 we got to know that we are living sacrifices. And, and when we worship, we worship, we offer ourselves completely to the Lord. Now, right now, in this virtual worship, you ought to be offering yourself completely to God. <laughs> Every day, we need to, to try harder to put forth some, some strong acts of love. Toward Jesus Christ. Even during your normal day. Even in your daily business. Your daily employment. You need to look up to Jesus. In your worship. You can work and just do a one sentence prayer. Lord I thank you. In your personal devotion. And with your family. Worship Christ with passionate or adoration. And that should come from a heart. That is truly in love with Jesus Christ. Is your heart in love with Jesus this morning? I, I, I'm talking about right now, even right now, we need to take a moment wherever you are right now and just make a commitment yeah. that you will begin to present all of who you are to him as a living and a, as a holy sacrifice and that you will give him 100% of whatever you do and whoever you are. I don't know about you. I know but the Lord sure been good to me. I don't know about you, but I can worship him right now. I can praise him right now, whatever situation I am in. Yes, I want you to turn truly to your worship. I want you to turn truly right now and give him your life. Well. Number two is to lovingly worship him. We need to worship the Lord. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Number three is to prepare or develop an attitude of thankfulness for what he has already done for you. He done brought us all from a mighty long way. Amen. The pandemic started last year. He brought us through that and he's bringing us through right now. And we need to, to cultivate Prepare. We need to develop an attitude of thankfulness for what he already done. We ought to be throwing up these holy hands up in the air right now telling the Lord, I thank you for where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for where you brought me from. I, I, I don't even worry about what you're taking me through, Lord, but I know you're going to get through it. Because I know if he bring you to it, he's going to bring you through it. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. Yeah. For this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. He made it personal. He said, for you mm -hmm. in everything by giving thanks. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
So why don't you thank God? Why don't you tell him, Lord, I thank you. Uh-huh. Tell him, Lord, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my grandchildren. I thank you for waking me up this morning. Yes, sir. And everything give thanks. Thank you. But this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Jesus gave up the glory. Mm -hmm. He gave up the majesty that was his in heaven. Yeah. All of it. He gave it up yeah. to take on the role of a lowly servant. Well. Lovingly submitting to his father's plan. It wasn't about him. All right. He suffered the wrath of God on the cross. The first on the cross was the first time he had ever been separated from the love of God. He took the penalty. He took the penalty that we ought to have suffered for our sin. Yeah. He did it because he loved us. He endured criticism. Well. He endured ridicule. Let them talk about you. Yeah. They did it to Jesus. Yeah. He endured unbelief. And he finally a uh, humiliating, humiliating death by crucifixion in order to write our relationship yeah. with God. Listen to it, not, not his relationship, but our relationship with God. Right. He humbled himself before the Father to become the Lamb of God. Yeah. And he did it so, he did it in full view of mankind. He didn't hide it. Everybody seen it. Everybody know about it. All right. He was even labeled a criminal. And then they unjustly convicted him. But guess what? He stayed on that old dusty road to cap. All right. He didn't leave it. And this wasn't just the brutal suffering that is depicted in all the movies. We seen how they beat him, but he went through it so much. He was full of God and full of men. He became sin. Yeah. So that we in that chain might miraculously become the righteousness of God. All right. He became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And through him, we have received God's free gift of salvation and eternal life. Yeah. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. Yeah. Thank you. Knowing oh, this. Man. Yes, sir. Knowing this. How could we respond any differently this morning than to absolutely love Jesus Christ with, with incredible passion and to be truly thankful this morning? Are you truly thankful this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone who calls yes. himself or herself a true Christian needs to remember that they were truly lost before they accepted Christ. Well, I don't care who you are. I don't care how saved you think you are. You were truly lost Amen. before you accepted Jesus Christ. Yeah. But now, but now, but now because of him, look what a true Christian can become in right standing before God the Father. Mm -hmm. You are redeemed and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Well. And now you are living with a true purpose in life. Yes. You are one who is truly abiding in Jesus Christ now. And you're doing it with a grateful heart. How many are you grateful this morning? All right. How All many right. are you grateful this morning? Yeah. Uh-huh. To be very honest with you, there isn't anything or anyone in our life that should have a greater importance or who deserve more thankfulness than the one who set us free from bondage and sin and separation yeah. from God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We ought to be abiding in him this morning. Yeah. Let me get ready to close this morning by asking you, where are you abiding this morning? All right. Where are you staying connected to this morning? Are you staying connected in anxiety? Are you abiding in anxiety? A lot of us are anxious right now. It's been some anxious moment for me over the last 14, 16 months. Yeah. I, I, I was anxious and I was uh, abiding in anxiety. anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The preacher abiding in anxiety too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Jesus. But Jesus. Jesus taught my heart. Amen. And, and I'm not abiding in anxiety no more. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the world. Yeah. 
Come on with it. Some of us are abiding this morning in loneliness. Amen. Some are abiding in discouragement. Some of us are abiding in fear. Some of us are, are abiding in anger. It's an angry world out there. That's most, that's so much anger going on. Yeah. And everybody thinks gun violence will take care of their anger. Hmm. Some of them are abiding in disappointment this morning. There are so many disappointed people walking around. And, and guess what? Many don't even know what they're disappointed in. Come on, yeah. somebody. Come on now. Some are abiding in worldliness. If the world doing it, they feel like they should be able to do it too. All right. What are you abiding in this morning? Well, abiding in Christ is a process. Yes, it is. So I want you to know, don't get discouraged. If it seems hard to understand how it's working out in your life, don't give up. Keep it moving. Just start it, doing it. Just start abiding. And then when you start, just rest in him. Rest in him. Hmm. Trust in him. Yeah. And allow him to meet you when you abide in him. All right. And, 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 and as I close today, chapter 15 of John, the ninth verse, it says, as the father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Well, Just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Yeah. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. See, a lot of us have lost our joy, but I'm trying to help you this morning how you're going to get your joy back. You're going to get your joy back by abiding in Christ. Yeah. He's standing with his arm wide open, yes. waiting on you. Yes. He said, greater love has no one than this yes. than to lay down one life for his friend. Yes. He laid his life down for every one of us. He laid his life down for me. He laid his life down for you. What you going to do with it? Well, yeah. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Yeah. No longer do I call you servant, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard when my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. All right. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask, listen now, I'm finished close. Huh. That whatever you ask, the Father in my name, he may give you. Whatever you ask, yeah. in the Father, Father God's name, he will give to you. What you waiting on? All right. The new sanctuary is ours. Yeah. We asking for it yes, in the sir. Father's name. Yes, sir. Lord, we thank you for this day. Yeah. We thank you for how we're going to stay connected to Jesus Christ. We thank you that we're staying connected. Yeah. And we're not going to let go. Change is coming. Yeah. I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Stay connected to Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen.